Brandon or oh, Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown. Okay, okay. So it, uh, he's a multidisciplinary artist. He can adopt different forms of art, from sculpture to uh, collage art, to discuss philosophical no uh, notion of time, mortality, and entropy from the lens of contemporary relation influenced by pop culture and the globalized world. He believes his discussion can be continued physically through his medium of choice, uh, especially his paper. So you all can see his paper machine uh, behind you all. Yeah. His uh, designer toys are blank toys. is a playful embodiment of his uh, artistic vision. So today his topic is going to share with all of us is uh, designer toys and art. Who are 
I would say like normal artists, and then they are the big fishes in the sea, like Koss, like uh, Murakami, like uh, Yayoi, Kusama. All these people start making their own version of toys as well. But when you start making it, you notice that their toys, there's no clean definition. The same sculptures which they produce for us, like for example over there, you see the two cost toys over there, uh, is the same pieces which will be exhibited in a museum as well, but scaled up. Even weirder, um, in 2008, the MoMA Museum in New York suddenly bought a dummy uh, by Kid Robot and they exhibited it as a sculptural piece within their museum. So that's just an idea of what's happening. But this isn't the final point, of course. Okay, so this is my personal experience. Uh, I am considered quite new to the sea. I only found out about it in 2016. Uh, like me, I, I, I love Japan. So every one year, I would try to go there and learn something new. So in 2016, I went there and I discovered Mandarake. <laughs> Worst place on earth. <laughs> hell. <laughs> hell, hell. Yeah, so you have to pass through these stories, you know, wow. And then you enter into uh, a heaven of toys. <laughs> but when I was there, uh, because obviously I, I, I do art, I want to find toys which are more niche, um, which is more focused on the creators who make it. Because, um, yeah, so when I was there, uh, I looked through a few things and I gravitated towards things I already know. For example, uh, Dido from Star Wars, which is actually a Funko Pop made out of vinyl. And then uh, obviously Babrik, which is everyone's go to. So I started out with Babrik as well. And uh, mini Funko Box at the side. And uh, the ones which are very weird are the ones at the bottom over here. I forgot the name of the producers actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but. That's an example of what toys uh, that exist out there. Uh, since then, I started collecting way really more, way too much, but uh, I do not regret anything. Uh, you can see, like, this is my current shelf, which among my favorite pieces are there. Uh, across my apartment, I put other stuff, of course. And this. Moving on. <laughs> So uh, the current landscape, which I want to talk about today, is from an artistic point of view. Okay, so the way I see it, uh, right now the industry is maturing. Just like any other industry, like for example, we take coffee, it always comes in three waves. The first wave is the traditional wave, where it's just mass consumerism. Okay, if you take a concept of coffee, it'll be your Aichong, your Nescafe, blah, blah, blah. That is the first wave. The second wave comes when it starts trying to level up the product, so it's have designer products like Starbucks, but it's still massive chains. And then the third wave is when artisans get involved, so it elevates it one more time. So in Malaysia, I would say the art economy is going through the same pace as well when it comes to toys. You have your normal, your grandfather used to make toys and they sell it in Kedai, Permainan, whatever, whatever. And then you have the Toys R Us, which is in the 90s. And right now you have the design toy culture. Uh, right, so in the art world, you can see that artists are now pushing what art can relate to uh, when it comes to toys. So you can see a lot of artists are playing with VR, are playing with uh, video games. Okay, but at the same time, there's a pushback. So a lot of people who go into VR, there's also another group of people who want something physical. So that's why sculptures and toys fill that void in the market. Alright, so many art toy manufacturers are pushing the medium forward using not just vinyl pieces uh, but also incorporating materials like uh, ceramics and wood. Okay, like right now within our gallery, you can see there's quite a lot of mixed usage. Uh, you have people who use vinyl, which is my favorite favorite material. I love I love vinyl, uh, but there's also resin pieces. Okay, uh, I see you, you popularize. Um, like me, I at the back, I do paper mache, so it's made out of paper cup, which is uh, a medium I use as an artist. 
And then there's also people who use Sculpey. Um, I think what material do you use? Sculpey, right? Yeah, um, and several other things. So the material itself is becoming ephemeral. You can do what you want because right now it's categorized towards art. So it comes from you as somebody who wants to create things. Immediately after you've got the interest to do it, you can start finding out how you can do it for yourself. So that's why right now, within two years I've joined, there's so many new faces in the scene, which makes me very happy uh, to see so many people interested. Right. So, like I mentioned before, artists are blurring the lines between toy and sculpture. You can't tell it anymore. Like uh, a lot of people always ask, like, why is that art? I would say, why is it not art? Okay? It's a matter of perspective. So this is a wrong English piece made out of vinyl. But at the same time, he painted extra on top of it. So he, from a normal product, he elevated it again. Right, so uh, this is just a highlight of several artists I quite like, which I would say they're not no longer really in the art toy specifically category because they exhibit their things on more global stage. So you find them in the art puzzles, you find them in uh, museums, you find them in galleries. So uh, for me as an artist, I'm more interested towards this direction in terms of art. And I really want to see uh, artists in Malaysia try to explore towards this direction as well. Because I feel right now we are doing a good job, but there's so much room for us to explore as a community uh, within the art society. Right, so uh, Karoshi is a good example. So he's known for carrying sculptures from Sitbox. You just type his name uh, online, uh, you can find yourself a lot of videos about all the cool stuff. So basically, he starts skateboards and then he will carve it up into a sculpture. Okay, but currently, if you see his uh, latest show, which happened in Art Basel last year, uh, he actually combined Sokubi, which is a Japanese name for soft vinyl, the stuff we use for Ultraman figures. Uh, right? So uh, he combined it with his material of skateboards on top. So you can see in the next slide. And the price is <laughs> way out there because I, when I heard about it, I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to pre order. Then I see the price and I say, I take it back. Yeah. Uh, in Malaysia, we have an uh, artist which plays around skateboard as well. I uh, don't know. <laughs> we have a few pieces over there which is owned by Hajim. It's on here. Maybe it's on here. Right, so I, I quite like it. So you can see different types of materials in the same place. So you can see vinyl and you see paper. So it speaks the language of the artist. Okay, next, uh, controversial artist in the art toy community. So Sublord has been around for a long, long time and a lot of people kind of like hate him <laughs> in a way because um, he took art toys in a very weird direction. Okay, so if you don't like this work, I totally understand as well. And if you don't accept it, I understand as well. Okay, but uh, in an artistic point of view, what he's doing is quite interesting. Okay, you can see he basically bootleg toys. What does that mean? You take original toys, you make a cast, then uh, from the cast, you mash things together, you keep bash it, and you create a program. So actually, you didn't start anything. You're just Remixing. Think of it like, like music, you know, when you make music, you take certain beat, beats, you put new beats over it, and then you call that CD yours. But actually it's made from different parts, from other parts, uh, other songs. Okay, let's, I'm not going to show the full video, it's actually 3 minutes, but I don't think we've got that much time. Okay, so uh, the next artist I would like to highlight is uh, Rodit Leong. Okay, uh, I'm lucky enough to buy one of his pieces. Uh, but he's one of those artists which has been since the start of the scene. Okay? Uh, so basically right now, uh, he does a lot of stuff. He does music, he does uh, graphic work, he does uh, figures. Um, and currently he's making art toys, which is a mix between toy and also a plant. Pop plant. Okay? Still available online. So let us see what it is. Let me click on Okay. Uh, so next, uh, I think we've got another two more artists and that's about it. 
Okay, uh, Daniel Eichel. So currently, uh, he's working with uh, sculptural pieces. I think recently I checked online and he's working with Pokemon to actually have a huge Pikachu in his town. Okay, so uh, he unveiled the Hollow Mickey figure uh, during the exhibition for Mickey the True Original this year actually, in 2020. Okay, uh, we'll just see what it is very quickly. Okay, uh, it's sold right now on a portfolio or something. Yeah, it's a gallery which is focused directly on art toys, but more on an art aesthetic. Uh. So the prices which you find isn't 200 ringgit or 1,000 ringgit. Uh, it's 20,000, that kind of prices. Yeah. So you can see like right now, there's a lot of artists who are playing in different categories. So you must choose yourself which one you want to go to. And the last one for today, which is uh, Taraki. Okay. Uh, he's actually a photographer. Um, and if you search his name, a lot of NSFW stuff will come out. <laughs> because he does a lot of stuff on uh, erotica and uh, bondage art. So, uh, yeah, I didn't search for it at work. Okay, but the themes which he used, uh, love, sex, consumption, natural beauty, and femininity, has been ongoing since uh, the 1960s. Okay, but uh, recently, he started getting interested with toys as well and he started incorporating it inside his artwork. Okay, so, he's a photographer, so he started taking color shots of flower arrangements and porcelain dogs. Okay, I'll show the example. Okay, so, you can see over there, that's an example of what photographs he does with the toy. So, he used toy not just as a medium of expression, but part of his themes in photography. Okay, but besides that, uh, he was given an opportunity by somebody who plays with ceramic okay, to make his own version of clay figurines. Okay. Uh, funny enough, this figurine is also sold in the one I mentioned before, a uh, portfolio by Daniel Ashram, the one with the Mickey just now, also sells this. So he puts it both at the same category. So for me, I would still say it's more towards a sculptural piece, but if you want to display it among your toys, you wouldn't stand up. Okay, so this is the questions which I want to ask uh, to just wrap up, all right? Um, of course, the debate between uh, what's art, what's not art, continue. Okay, it's, that's how the art world works. But I would like to encourage more people to try to push the boundaries of what sculptural art can be when it comes to art toys. You don't just make traditional stuff which other people have done before. But if you do that, that's totally fine. That's your style. But if you want to go for something more out there, I think there's a lot of room in Malaysia to, to try it. And that's why in Titi Mera, I, I find it very interesting because we see all these elements from different parts of uh, the art world together in the same place. You see over there, there's the street culture stuff. And then you see like uh, very like uh, graphic stuff over here. And then, uh, all kinds of stuff. So, uh, if you've got some time after this, you haven't seen it yet, maybe you can just take a look around and uh, enjoy yourself. Okay, so that's all from me. Thank you for coming. Thank you.